Okay, so I've um, added in unit tests and uh, the final test. I also uh, took math off of Thanksgiving week, so we're not going to be doing any math that week since, we, since that'll be a short week. And so where we lay right now is uh, he's, he'll finish up the curriculum like sometime in May and probably will move out because of days that we take off or sick days, but that gives us a lot of wiggle room, which is really good. Um, as far as these unit tests and final tests go, um, as if you use math, you say, math, you see, I'll just say that I'm always tempted not to add those in, uh, but I think it's important to these weekly tests, uh, they cover pretty much the new concept, the, the concept that was learned that week. Uh, the unit tests are a cumulative test. They cover the, the previous weeks. And then the final test covers for the whole year. So these unit tests especially, I feel like they're helpful because, you know what, since we have so much wiggle room, if we get to a test, a weekly test or a unit test, and my son doesn't do real well, I mean, really, if he gets less than an A on on anything, um, this is a mastery-based curriculum, so it's, it's in math just by the nature of the subject, it builds on previous um, on previous lessons, previous concepts learned. So there's no point in continuing if he's struggling with something. And if he gets less than an A on a test, then I know there's some issue he's having. And so what I'll do then is let's say he takes test 23 and I realize that uh, maybe he gets less than an A on it, then I think, you know what? he needs to practice um, some more. And I look to see what was he struggling with. So what I'll do in that case is I'll just say, click this here more and I'll say shift entire schedule out from this day forward. I'll shift it out a week and then he'll have a week of worksheets to practice what, um, what he was struggling with. Um, or I'll will cover that concept in another way you know there's a way to do it with a game or if i need to pull in you know some other resource that's what i'll do uh, until he gets it and then we'll continue on and this is what i've done and we always finish math early and you know early for us in the school year since our last day of school is at the end of july so there's a lot of wiggle room for that um, and so that's that's how I like to handle that. So I'm gonna mark that done. And let's do uh, one more that's a little bit different. So this is, um, he's doing Apologia's Young Explorer series next year, the chemistry and physics, uh, the exploring creation. And this is what he chose for science. Um, I gave him different options and he really wanted to do that. He did a, a chemistry unit on his Minecraft homeschool this past year. He really liked that and was interested in it. So this is what he's doing. And I wanted a textbook-based science curriculum for him this year um, because he's learning how to learn that way since, I mean, let's get real, that's how a lot of a lot of um, schools, you know, in the future, a lot of learning happens from a textbook. So I can't, you know, I'm not gonna pretend like that's not the case. Even though he's, it's not his, his favorite, more most natural way of learning. You know, part of the reason we homeschool is so that I can help him with that and just help him do his best so that when he goes to college and all, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to make uh, special allowances for him. Um, he's going to need to learn however they present their information and most likely it's going to be with a textbook. So he's doing this textbook based uh, science this year and it's one that he chose. And uh, because I have used Apologia before, although it's been a few years, I know that in the, this is actually the notebook and journal, and I know that in the notebook and journal that they have uh, suggested lesson plans. So I see here when I look at the table of contents that there are, let me move all this stuff up a little bit, out of my way. So there are 14 lessons. But a lot going on with the lessons. And then I flip over, there's a daily, there's a couple pages. Are there 14 of Oh, yeah. There are several pages of daily schedules. So they have basically, they have. 
two days a week that they plan, and there are how many weeks? 28 weeks. All right, and there's a lot in each day. So if you look at this daily schedule, you see here's day one, and there's a list of things. So I had to look at this a minute to see what was going on. So I can see here when I look at my what I planned, um, I did plan for science to be two days a week, partly because I remember that's probably how it was going to be laid out. And also because that's really just all I want to spend on science, because he's doing other things. Um, you know, he, he needs to do like his language arts every day, and, and we have other subjects to cover, so I just really want him to do that twice a week. Uh, so let me go back here. And so when I look at this, I see that each day there's a list of things to do but basically I looked for a pattern because I'm the best way to use homeschool planning is if you can find a pattern for your lesson planning use that so the pattern is basically reading um, from the textbook doing whatever little experiments and all they suggest and then um, doing one of the pages in this notebook and journal or doing something in the notebook and journal and that's not every day but that's um, that's a lot of days most of the days uh, and then every once in a while there's going to be an experiment so when's the first experiment I see I see there's an experiment on week four day two um, and I can see that we're not going to do all of the notebooking pages because I remember when we did this before kind of what he liked and what he didn't and um, I don't think it's necessary to do all of them. So I think what I'm going to do is, okay, how many? There were 28 weeks. So I'm going to use the power of the pattern to populate a, a, a course subject here and then I'll go in one by one and edit things so I'm adding a new class oh wait again let me see I think I'm gonna start this I think I'm gonna start this the third week of school and it's on a Thursday so this is the third week and Thursday Friday so I'm gonna start it here I'm gonna start a class do not want every weekday. I want Thursday, Friday. I may change that later, but that's what I'm going to do right now and the last day of class. So this is science. And Michael, so let me save this. All right. So now I'm going to do more options. Recurring pattern. And I had, what was it? You're probably like, Leslie, don't you remember you've said it twice? 28. All right, so 28 weeks. I'm just going to say, hmm, is that what I want to do? 28 weeks, but um, each lesson covers two weeks so I have to ask myself how I'm gonna am I gonna put in here like lesson one and I don't know so let me try a couple of things um, for now since there's 14 lessons I'm gonna put 14 here and and I'm gonna say that there's four days to the pattern. So you can do this here, add another day to the pattern. It's now have four days. I'm not sure why I can hit back here. Um, oh, I wanna change this. I want these assignments to end on the last day and right here. So then if I put 14 days to the pattern. Okay. So let's say I do lesson. So you don't have any tests. So lesson 
so I can say lesson one. And I, I do want to have what lesson number it is, um, just for my reference. So I know it'd be easier for me to, to kind of know where he is in the school year. Um, so I'm going to say lesson one. And so each day I'm going to have him do lesson one. Read pages. And then I'm going to leave this blank afterward. And I'll go in later and, and add the pages for each, each one. So read pages and then add another assignment. And notebooking, this is what they call it, notebooking journal. Journal page, and I'm going to leave that blank. Um, okay, so if I put this, another assignment, so then I have lesson one, lesson one, lesson one, lesson one, lesson two, and here we have lesson 14. All right, so I can do that. Um, or I could have done where I have like week one and week two. Should I do that? Now this daily schedule that goes by weeks is in um, the notebook and journal for him to reference if he wants to. And also the lesson numbers are in there. Uh, so I think I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna do it like I have here. Because either way, we'll will be easily easily able to reference the daily schedule if we need to. Um, all right, so I have here that goes through May lesson 14. That's the last lesson. All right. So that's the last lesson. So let's see how this has laid out. I'm going to show the whole school year and see all this wiggle room back here, which is good. This is ending in May. All right. But then what I need to do, I mean, so I use the power of the pattern to populate that. But now I need to go through here and look at this schedule and see what page numbers to read. Um, and they have a lot of other other information here, like read these pages and narrate, and then um, work on your notebook and journal, and then do the try this like a little experiment on this page, and then read the text, go back to the textbook and read these other two pages and narrate. And like we're not it's too complicated. So I think what I'm going to have him do is I'm just going to put here all the pages to read for day one that they recommend. So this is for day one, it would be lesson one day one would be pages 15 through 20. So I'm just going to do 15 through 20. And then notebook and journal page 12. And then day two is 20 through 27, and then the notebooking page 13. Like in uh, the last class, the writing class, uh, he last time we did used Apologia, he was in first grade. It's been a long time, and he, you know, I managed every bit of it. Uh, so he's not. That experience isn't going to help him right now because now he's in he's going to sixth grade 
and I'm going to try to have him manage most of this on his own. I might have him read aloud to me some of these, or maybe I, every day. I mean, that's what I did with history this year. I had him, whenever he read from the student textbook, I had him read that aloud to me um, because um, I realized that he wasn't, like he was seeing the words, but he wasn't, he didn't know how to pronounce some of them. So I had to correct a lot of pronunciation. And so I want to help him with that, you know, that's building up that educational vocabulary. Uh, you know, one step of that is pronouncing the words correctly. Uh, so, and also that, that keeps me in tune with what he's learning. So I'll probably have him read these aloud to me and then narrate. And that just means, you know, I'm going to have him, I'll ask him some questions and see if he understood um, what he read. And then I'll have him the little experiments that they have sprinkled throughout this, instead of putting them in here, I'll just tell him, you know, if you want to do those experiments, do them. And he'll probably will want to because he loves science. Um, I purchased an, uh, the science kit from Rainbow Resource. They had a science uh, experiment kit for, for this curriculum, which should have everything in there. I've done that before where it was all labeled per week and, and all that. So he'll be able to to um, pull the materials out of there and and uh, do the little experiments with my supervision. But I'm going to see how much he can do on his own. And then do the notebook and journal page for me to check. So the first, when we first start off with this, the first few weeks, it's going to be me guiding him along. And then we'll get into our rhythm. All right. So after adding all of these pages, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do that. I'm also going to look here for, um, to see what notebook and pages specifically we want to do. And then I also look for the experiments and call those out and make sure those are always on a Friday since that's the day where he's got room in his schedule to do that kind of fun thing. Um, and there may be times since we have wiggle room here. There may be times where I have to stretch something out. Um, either stretch out, like add a third week. I, I remember I had to do that when I used Paul Gia before, you know, add a third week to the schedule for each lesson. Or, or just, we'll just skip some notebooking pages and stuff. I, um, I tend to get caught up in wanting to get every worksheet done. I'm trying not to do that this year. All right, so that is what I'm going to do for that. Um, when I'm done with this video, that's what I'm going to do for that. And then when I am done with that, I will mark it as planned. Uh, now I still have a lot of things to plan. Um, things like these literature units, those I don't do upfront because um, sometimes I let my son uh, choose what book he's going to read. Um, you know, we, we kind of make a decision when he's finishing up one book, what, what's the next book to move to. And so then I purchase the literature unit for the one that he's decided on. And then I plan that out from her lesson plans that she provides with that. And, um, so then that, that's when I'll do that. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go beyond the literature units this year, this past year. He mostly did literature, her literature units, but it's coming up year. I think we're going to add in some other things or, or just try a different way of doing things. Um, I'm planning to create some worksheets to focus on character and setting and chapter summaries and that kind of thing since he's in, he'll be in sixth grade and to do a little more grown up um, kind of literature study. Uh, reports, choosing favorite sentences and unknown vocabulary words, that kind of thing, and to teach him how to um, how to read, basically, and paying attention to things like character and setting, and and knowing what he's read so far, chapter summaries, get sneak in a little more writing. Uh, so for reading, I'm going to be planning that throughout the throughout the school year. See, spelling, these Evan Moore books, here's for spelling and grammar, they have a very easy pattern, um, just like the 
like Matthew C. So those will be real quick to plan. Uh, let's see, Homeschool in the Woods uh, Elections, that's a lap book, I believe. And so I'll, I, I did purchase that. I'm just going to have to pull that up and see what the recommended lesson plans are. And I'm, we're just doing that once a week. Um, and this U.S. government lap book. So we'll do one of these at a time. I think we're going to do this elections one first since an election is coming up. And then it's like the first semester we'll do that. And then the second semester, depending on how long this takes, we'll, when we're done with this one, we'll move to this, to this government lap book one. Um, what else needs to be planned? Story of the world. Um, that I'll treat very much like the science that I just uh, planned. That one I think is 40 weeks. So, um, and I'm planning to just do two days. So I'll probably have one day where we listen to, instead of listening to like one story a day, we'll listen to the audio book like for a whole chapter, one a week. And then the next day we'll do one of the little experiments or not experiments but projects craft projects or cooking you know he's really interested in cooking so I'll I'll be sure to focus on any cooking projects uh, the store of the world comes with you know a whole activity manual with ideas last time I used store of the world I did too much too many of the projects this time I really just want to choose one a week so we can just move right on through it um, so that's pretty much how I'll do so science is planned Geography has a real easy pattern that's easy to do. For typing instructor, let me show you how I'm going to do that. So typing, right now I'm saying we're going to do that on Thursday and Friday. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that here. Let me close this. I'll come back to it. We'll start typing. Um, maybe the second week. So class, typing. Uh, for Michael, we want this selected days of the week. So we just want it on Thursday and Friday. All right. And here is where I'm just going to use this. It's not a pat pattern. It's just the same thing every time. So we'll do, I'm going to type here, typing instructor 10 minutes. So that's usually they set a timer he'll play a little typing game on there in 10 minutes he's done and here I'm going to show the whole year so I to every class they add this add so then there we go done um, and here I'll just say typing have I planned it? Yes, I have. To see how easy that was instead of having to type, in, type it in every day. Um, Rosetta Stone is going to be a similar thing. Um, I'm just going to let me give him a little break from that. Start it. Let's say I start it here. And how many, what days are we doing Spanish? Monday and Wednesday. So. I'm going to add this here, class, Spanish. So right now, select the days of the week, Monday and Wednesday, but we're not going to, this one's going to be a little bit different because um, he's going to alternate. So I'm going to go to more options, recurring pattern. And so I'm just going to say to the end of the school year, so I'm just leaving that alone. And then for day one, he's going to do Rosetta Stone, 10 minutes. He gets really frustrated with this. So I alternate with Quizlet. Um, Quizlet is a flashcard type app. And I have him do vocab learn vocabulary, Spanish vocabulary on there. And you do like rounds of learning. So I'll say he's going to do two rounds of that. So he'll alternate uh, between the do Rosetta Stone, Quizlet, Rosetta Stone, Quizlet. And do that for the year. So 
now I've got Spanish planned. Easy breezy. Easy peasy. Um, and then I'll have to talk to my husband about piano. I have this tentatively down here. He's going to be teaching that to them. So, so what I'm planning to do is, since he normally works from home on Fridays, it'll be easy for him to um, spend a little teaching time with them on Friday. So I'm planning that on Fridays he does the teaching, and then I'll they'll have to practice a few minutes each day um, depending on the age of the child so like my my rising first grader he'll probably just do like five minutes of practice starting off and they'll probably all do five minutes of practice starting off but then um, my um, and then my middle son gets pretty frustrated so he'll probably stick to five or ten minutes and as time goes on I'll I'll um, kind of raise the amount of time they spent on that from my oldest up probably just up to 10 minutes so my oldest um, I'll probably have him do 10 minutes I might stretch it out to 15 minutes of practice a day uh, depending on how things go so that's my plan for that but um, I need to sit down with my husband with the curriculum he's chosen to see you know he may not want to do that on Fridays my he also usually works from home on Wednesday so he might want to do the teaching on Wednesday and then the other days they just practice um, and you know it's three students so um, you know he may want to try to teach them all together to together um, but I know at some point he's going to have to teach them separately and because um, when they learn together they tend to be pretty competitive and it just it just spirals down into a, a very negative place. So I'll have to work with him. So you see how that works. I I don't have a whole lot of hard work for him. I'll need to move on to my other boys. They're also using um, curriculum that it's like even more curriculum that's easy to plan out. Um, and uh, I, here's a new one that I haven't used before science in the beginning so I'll have to look at that to see how to do that I have that plan for Thursday and Friday so hopefully we can stick with that um, we have some additional resources so like we have story of the world but I failed to mention oh I clicked the link and it's taken me there but look well-trained mind story of the world this is where I bought it a uh, little sneak peek um, I also wanted to use some other resources we I purchased homeschool in the woods lap pack about the nights. So after I plan out Story of the World, I'll then go in and look for where to slip in some of these projects to kind of mix things up a little bit and um, and add those to history. And that's another reason I don't like to add like, um, why I don't like to add this title here you know about that's referring to just like one curriculum because I may add in other resources you can do that here um, you can add resources like you can put in exact and these are resources we've used in the past and I used to do that and I realized that for me that was just pointless uh, I think you can even add links here um, if you want them to watch a video or something and I may do that for my oldest at some point um, but in general I don't like to name the subjects according to a specific curriculum because I may use additional resources besides just that one textbook or you know that one resource all right so there's a little quick quick peek into how um, I lesson plan um, I'm gonna over the next couple of weeks continue to do this do I'm gonna try to do like one a day um, and um, and then I'll reorder them here into like where I want them done so I know I want this down here somewhere every day so that each student has his his work group together and um, so I'm going to try to lesson plan one subject a day to spread it out, spread out the work. Uh, and, uh, and and then I can get started on 
creating workbox labels and all that kind of stuff for them. Uh, so it's a process, right? But that's the lesson planning portion. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.